Hello guys and welcome back to automation. In today's topic, I'm going to speak more about the relative X path. So in our previous tutorial, we learned the basic difference between an absolute and a relative X path. We know for absolute X path, we need to traverse all the way from HTML till the web element. Now, during the course of time, if a developer adds a new tag somewhere in between, then our entire absolute X path is going to change. On the other hand, a relative X path will be constant as long as the property of that element is constant and unique. Okay, so let's learn more about the relative X path. Let's see the structure. The structure would be double slash, which means from anywhere, okay, followed by tag. A tag can be input anchor for A. It can be div, it can be anything. Inside that, at the rate, okay, at the rate attribute is equal to, in single quotes, the value. Okay, so this is our basic structure. Let us use this in a live application. I provided the link of this application below for you. Let's take our drop down continents. So press F12 and select our drop down. Now our drop down here has got a select tag and an ID called continents. So using the structure, what we shall do? Double slash. Our tag name is select. <coughs> so select. In square braces, we need to put at the rate ID. Okay, is equal to continents. Okay, I think it's right. See you in Yeah. So okay, this has to come in a double say in a single quotes. So let me take this. Let me copy it. Come to our uh, in. I mean, this is Chrome. So in our Chrome in developer tools, press Control F. You'll get a small text box here. Paste it in it. So once you paste it, you will see one of one. It gets selected in yellow. And yeah. So our X path is done. You don't need to use ID, you can use class, you can use name. You can basically use any option of your choice. What, for example, if I say by using ID, there are two elements having the same ID or there are two elements having the same class. And now you need to use another property in order to get it unique. So for that, what you should do is you should use the property called AND. So how do you do that? So for using two different properties, okay, you put and, and then you put your second attribute property right here. So let me paste in our same code as before. So if it was not getting identified uniquely by ID, what I would do is I would do and, okay, and maybe I would use name continents. So at the rate name is equal to, I guess it's the same spelling here. So yeah, let me paste this. Okay, it's still unique, right? If I change anything, then it's not going to be. Okay, so yeah. There's one more thing which you should know is uh, this is good for here for elements but what if you have inner text so you have an anchor here you have href href as you can see it is not a good practice cause it might not be constant so you have got the inner text so yeah we can do xpath using inner text as well the way you can do that is this double slash Okay, tag in in square braces put text text open and close your curve braces is equal to value. Okay, so if I <coughs> if I use this in my current uh, program over here, it will be double slash a. It's going to be text. 
equal to in single places let me copy my inner text here and let me paste it okay this is it let me copy this and let me paste it here okay it's unique so this is how you can find an element by its inner text okay uh, yeah this is for the basics of uh, your uh, relative XPath I'll teach more about XPaths in our next session thank you guys